All right, first I need to get the hang of the microphone. I know it's quite a, le a steep learning curve, but how am I doing? Can you hear me? Okay, fantastic. Okay, we have a great crowd today, and I know that I stand between um, you know, a, a networking evening and your drinks at the end, so I will try to make my presentation as entertaining as possible. So therefore, um, I will talk about something fun. I will talk about a game. I will talk about what I do in my day job. I am the only one, I don't want to say I'm the only one, but I'm the odd one out here. I have a nine to five job. I am full time employed. I've been on holidays, quite a few. Sorry, Hayden. I know that it's a, you know, it's a painful point and, and so on. Um, but um, I have a fantastic job. So I'm very proud of the fact that I lead a cybersecurity and criminology center. And I lead um, about six professors that answer all those very difficult questions that research throws us at, at us. So we have um, a number of projects that are covering IoT issues, blockchain, uh, malware detection, and whatnot. And on a side, I was thinking about something else. I always thought that throughout my career, and well, actually, you cannot see my career here. It was at the at the start of the of the event. Um, at the throughout my career, I realized that I usually work kind of 90, 10 percent in a very male um, atmosphere. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. I have always enjoyed it and never thought it was there was something that would be out of the extraordinary with that. I'm the only woman, six, six other professors, and all of my PhD students are men. Um, but anyway, so this is just a bit of a flavor of what we will be talking about a little bit later. But um, um, what, what, what is behind me is very colorful, is to address an issue that we were wondering about for some time. And like I said, it's not my main stream of, of activity. But um, if I was to ask Hayden, Rehan, Marco, and so on, you know, all those, all those skills that um, Rehan was you know, fantastically listed in a very organized and structured manner. I'm sure that you enjoyed the slide. I certainly did. It was amazing. Um, when did you learn them? When did you realize that you are the risk taker? Yeah? At what age you realized, I want to be, you know, I want to drive it. I want to lead it. I want to go for it and do something absolutely uh, sort of out of this world or just earn money, you know? I don't know what your motivations are and so on. So we asked that question and we looked at the boring stuff of curriculum and so on. So today my presentation is how do we address or when do we start the thinking about being an entrepreneur? And for this, we had, um, you know, we, 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 we sort of have a project called Kid Venture and this is where the colorful background to the slide comes from. Anyways, we have a problem, which is fantastic, because problem is a good thing, according to Hayden, isn't it? So, um, Royal Society says that, you know, schools and colleges are doing their part, you know, curriculum is exciting. Yes, no, yes, no, okay, never mind. Um, but we have a problem. We have a shortage of digitally skilled um, workforce, and as AI and IoT and various other emerging technologies sort of kick in, we will have more shortage of appropriately um, skilled workforce. The only trouble is that, you know, if we think of the society being 50-50, male and female, yeah, uh, we only have kind of very much single digits of girls who are going into cybersecurity, who are going into STEM uh, engineering and so on for subjects. But that's a different story for another day. Anyways, we had, um, f um, I had uh, over the last year a curriculum inquiry project which we looked at how schools go about teaching um, the, the, the digital skills as such. But what was interesting throughout that project, it emerged that entrepreneurship is not even a part, it's not even a kind of on a horizon of something that children could learn. And perhaps with all this matrix of skills that you have to learn, is not exactly the right place to acquire those. But anyways, um, the part that was interested for me, or interesting for me as a researcher, was that we always think of our millennials or the new generation as digital natives, right? They all know what they're doing. Yes? 
Do you agree? No? I only have one, one, one person shaking hand, um, uh, his head and stuff. We have a misconception of if you can open a Facebook account, if you can Snapchat and so on, you're absolutely ready. Well, anyways, so our, our curriculum inquiry project, um, a base sort of interviewed a number of uh, pupils. We interviewed teachers, we interviewed parents, whether they see cybersecurity as a career path for their, for their daughter. What do you think the answer would be? Never mind, you got the, you got the idea. Um, we also interviewed a number of uh, female role models, but that's uh, again a story for another day. But here you go, at 10 years old, what do you think um, children should feel like? You know, what from the point of view of entrepreneurship? Clearly not all of them will go into this fairly risky and, and uh, sort of um, problem um, <laughs> overwhelmingly problematic and, and then dangerous route and so on. But um, what we have done was not to call an activity entrepreneurship, long word, very scary for some of the children and girls and so on, um, or, you know, just, just to say problem solving. Here you go. They were asked to create a robot. How would you feel if you were asked to create a robot today? Commercially viable product. You need to research your population. You need to know how you're going to make money. You also need to know what other people are doing, how to protect your property and so on. All sorts of things that are very important. Fantastic. The moment that you do not say the word coding, technology, you know, um, uh, all, all sorts of things that scare um, uh, uh, small children at, at, a, at a fairly sort of early age, they do absolutely amazing things. But again, I only have 20 minutes and I can only talk to you about what um, sort of our results were. The interesting part was after the interview of, so they were given the, uh, the, 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 the teams of actually boys and girls as well, we didn't want to have a you, you, sort of one-sided study, were given a task to create a robot which will be commercially viable. It would have to have a purpose. It would have to have an um, uh, sort of to be suited for a specific environment, whether it's operating in the water, where it's a, it's a home robot and so on. Um, so anyways, the interesting part was when we talked about the process, when we looked at how they were working as teams, when we looked at, uh, sort of talked through what risk taking, what are the elements such as insurance, such as what an entrepreneur is and so on are. So it was interesting to find out what they think. The worst part that out of the results that we found was, you know, how many of you watch Apprentice? I'm not expecting all of you are, you know, successful entrepreneurs and so on. Reality shows and so on are not, are not really enticing young people to be entrepreneurs. The girls told me that, well, look at them. They get shut down in the board meetings. They're all, if the best are failing, you know, where are we going to fit in, you know, in the future? It's like, Alan Sugar, you need to rethink, you know, the approach to teaching, uh, to, to, to encouraging entrepreneurship and so on. The part that also was worrying was that the decision to go into technology or digital um, economy and so on is made a long, long time before GCSEs. Primary school is, is still manifesting the, um, the, the, the issue of girls being told the technology is not for you. You are not good at building. You're not good at numbers. You know, here you go. Here's some crayons. Go, 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 go doodle and so on. But it's okay. We actually um, asked the, uh, the, looked at the ways that um, boys view the problem as well. So they undertook a fairly similar project of where they were building AI robots and so on. This is where for them coding, you know, going through Python and so on was not an issue. They just went through it and so on. But they highlighted something. They said, well, listen, if we talk about role models and then if we look at someone who encouraged or or um, helped us to think about you know starting a new business or or developing a new product and so on you would think of Steve Jobs you would think of Bill Gates yeah are you getting where, where I'm trying to, 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 to sort of make a conclusion there's very few female leaders female entrepreneurs where children can identify with. And this presents a little bit of a problem for our future economy. So at some point we collected, well, um, some role models as well. So there's um, um, 
um, IBM, uh, FinTech Circle, a very successful entrepreneur. Uh, that's myself, that's PwC, BBC, uh, National Rail, and so on. And we had a sort of a reflection of what it should look like if we was to create um, a colorful, a diverse, and uh, digitally prepared um, work skill from there. So anyhow, um, about a year and a half ago, myself and a consortium of um, um, of partners from uh, Italy, Portugal, Turkey, Czech Republic, um, Greece, and uh, myself at the time. Um, we got together and we thought we should do something about it, and we should do something fun. So what we have done was to create a kid venture uh, project, and it links with the agenda of, um, of the European Commission, which says that we are not doing enough in building the entrepreneurial um, uh, workforce. Social challenges in Europe require more entrepreneurial citizenship, uh, citizens, and we wanted to have a dynamic uh, economy, and we wanted to say that you know, there are key skills that we need to shape up. There's key skills, key attitudes that we need to change and, and to do something about it. So this is why we had um, the idea of the game. Long, long time ago, it seems, September 2016, we said we would like to have a game which will bring children, irrespective of their gender, um, vertical of their, um, of their age between 6 and 10, and see if at the age of the, you know, when the world is your oyster, when you have no preconceived ideas, uh, you it would be the right time to start developing the, um, uh, the entrepreneurial skills. So we did our research, particularly with the EU countries in mind, um, did the proof of concept, developed the better game, and now we are kind of at the pilot testing and the final game is just around the corner. In August 2019, we should be able to, be, uh, to sort of demonstrate it. Who is involved? A lot of teachers, trainers, and parents. Children will have the game once we, we want, once it's um, you know the, the, the proof of concept is done and, and the testing and so on. Um, it is made. Uh, it will be made available to organisations active in entrepreneurship. So if you are interested or or link with children, let me know. Um, and we hope that the result of this project will be well, better economy ultimately, but as children become young adults, we'll have a more effective or active European citizens. So the game is actually developed by our Portuguese partner, um, and all of the, so it, it takes place in a city of the future, which actually children from different schools uh, around the, well, around Europe, from Czech Republic, Turkey, uh, Portugal, and so on, have drawn, so the, all the digital media is produced by, by children and for children inside of the um, of the of the futuristic city you have you know you have experts you have players and all of them have a specific area of um, of expertise that could be financial marketing R&D production and so on the concept that you can ask for help was actually quite new to children that we interviewed which was a bit of a shocker because they assumed if you're an entrepreneur well actually don't look at Hayden because there would be one person who does absolutely everything so when you start a business, you should know everything. Finance, R&D, and so on and so forth. So it was a little bit interesting for them to find out that actually get help. You know, there's people out there who will, who will do most of, your th of the things. So anyways, uh, children are in teams. They obviously um, um, sort of work, well, compete with each other. Which actually brings me uh, to, to another point that I was um, sort of forgot, I forgot to mention earlier. When the children were working in teams, it took about 20 minutes for them to kind of organize themselves, come up with a concept. You have to remind them that they shouldn't doodle sort of a lot of uh, details on the robot, otherwise they would not have the, uh, you know, the final product towards the end of this, but that was okay. What happened after 20 minutes, and one person was their R&D uh, um, kind of element, uh, they were on Google, you know, on, on the phone, and the other three are working in the team, which was interesting to see. Um, they went to look at each other's work, yeah? And it's a competition. So it was quite easy to, to, to tell them, guys, if you all come up with exactly the same robot, what do you think? It, you know, who will be the, 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 um, you know, the winner of, 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 this, uh, of this game or of this uh, activity and so on? 
So IP was actually quite straightforward to, to explain to children and so on. But anyways, so they had to do, so in the game, there's a number of stages. They need to go through them and, and kind of filter them out um, as, as, as uh, who has the successful robot throughout. They interview, they do market research. They have to go and build a prototype of the robot which we also had to kind of modify and go um, around uh, looking at uh, what are the parts that they could use, which parts are copyrighted, you know, which ones they have to buy the, the patent for, um, get the little controls and so on. Clearly, if it's a robot that is suited for uh, the water-based activities, you know, it has to have specific design, specific movements and so on. Um, yeah, so costs, they need to come up with what the costs are. They have limited supplies. It's not, uh, you know, you're not living in the economy where you have um, uh, bottomless pockets and so on. Production, launching campaign, patent registry and so on. Things that you need to know, I hope, in the future. Well, anyways, so somewhere down the, ri the line, we have product development where they watch, you know, how their product is being manufactured, uh, what is the facility and so on, if there's different effects, yeah, if there's recalls on the, on, the, um, on the product, they need to be aware of it, and so on and so forth. So, if you're interested, have a, I guess, um, follow us how we um, get on with the, um, um, with the development and launch of, of, this, of this game. But um, we hope that, you know, it will be popular and it will um, uh, teach our, sort of, the children across Europe um, all sorts of um, necessary skills and will be fun to play for both parents and, um, and, um, and, and the children as such. But I know that I'm probably just over the, uh, over the time that I was allocated. So the idea is to have an enjoyment, to have fun, and then where, depending on the age group or depending on the age which... Uh, which is playing or, uh, or competing with the game and so on, that teachers also can take away some of the bits that are more technical, that are more focusing on STEM, talk about AI, talk about um, coding techniques and so, so quality assurance and various other things which prepare children for uh, a more digitally, um, um, digitally um, prepared work workforce. I was interviewed by DMCS. Um, they were asking the same questions. Where do we get the workforce? Why girls are not staying? Or if, if girls are going into cybersecurity, why they're not sort of filtering through into the companies um, to work? So we, we had a, a, an interesting conversation. I said, listen, I have, I have a couple of projects that address this, this issue. And then they asked, but what happens when when they go into the employment, what happens when, you know, how the career is structured. It's like I said, give me money, I will find out. But uh, <laughs> anyways, um, we had, a, I'm going to move on from the Digital Policy Alliance and so on, um, just to say that um, um, it's never, the pro any project that I ran before in, in R&D or, or just any research that I have done has never been alone. We have always found companies who either supported sustainability of the project or were, were sort of brought on board. And if you have any issues that might be particularly similar in, you know, with the whole idea of women in IT or in it, um, we are looking to, uh, to explore the phenomenon further. You know, what are the barriers and determinants Deterrence, why they don't say, uh, what can be done, you know, what is, what's the gender balance when it's right, um, and gender aware cybersecurity solutions is my personal favorite. Um, you know, we always have a solution which is kind of one size fits all, and we never kind of thought of what would be the differences. Um, and particularly in my research, I do a lot of privacy modeling, gender does matter you know, how to make, how to achieve higher, um, a secure, a better security posture if we address the gender. Um, you can talk to me, please, um, if ways of funding further research into diversity, supporting PhD ships, mentor female students, and there's many other opportunities. Here's my um, email address. Um, okay, all right, that was quick. Thank you. Thank you.